it's funny because when we're going up to speed, I'm sitting behind Corey like, go faster, go faster, go faster. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but Corey, so those who don't know, Corey is your brother and he was doing like, I'm 13 or 1400 Watts. And you came by at like sustained 1700 Watts. Yeah. And then you just burst people's dreams all around the internet <laughs> watching that video. Cause there's no way like Corey's faster than most people. And yeah. then you're on Corey's wheel to spin around, which is, yeah. we'll get all into this, but yeah. Uh, Hunter doesn't Hunter Hunter goes second in our layout train. So everyone has position like same thing as basketball. The way we look at our team and the way we're trying to build our team is that everybody has positions, right? Like you, you have a center, you have your forwards and then you have your guards. And it's the same thing. Like me and Corey play the sprinters. Then there's the two all arounders that we usually put in the middle. So that's uh, typically it's, it's so that typically Scott Law uh, and uh, Tyler Williams and Scott Law is a sprinter. He's Literally, I've seen him, I've raced against him, and he, he's beaten me before. Um, but so, and then Scott, and then Tyler has just like this long, drawn out power. If you go watch our tour of Mar Marietta video, he just he just rides this massive gear. <laughs> he'll mm -hmm. ride the rotation all the way down to one lap to go, and then he'll just sprint in this massive gear, and it looks like he's not going that fast. But when you step out into the wind after being behind him, it's like he, he's going really fast. So we have those two guys in front of us, and then and then Hunter, and then like a Corey Lockwood. So it's like the guy that was leading out in that video goes like he he's going with like two laps to go or something. I like that analogy. So center would be high FTP, probably big diesel. Yeah, like good draft. Mm -hmm. a bigger a bigger mm -hmm. rider and then sprinters would be poppy kind of guard yeah so you want to have like you want to have tt guys that are just holding big power and they can they can if you have two of those guys if you can get two of those guys um they, their power is smooth it's going to be you know higher ftp it's not going to be they can go toward the front they can do more of the workload as you're bringing the race down to like three laps to go and then you want to have two all-arounders and all-arounder guys are like Corey's even an all-arounder, right? Like Corey's an all-arounder. Scott, uh, Scott is turning into more of an all-arounder. But it's basically guys that can ride the breakaway. They can do the FTP, but they still can. They're still sprinting over like, you know, like twenty watts per kilo or something. Twenty-two watts per kilo. Um, and then and then you have like and then you have your sprinters <laughs> and then you have your sprinters that sit behind. And that that on our team right now that typically has to do with like who's in the least amount of shape. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like that's all that is, is like, okay, well you can't help. Like we'll rotate with five guys and one guy will sit on and be the sure thing. Uh, and typically that's the guy that has the least amount of shape. So can, since we're on it, John, can we jump into this? I know Let's it's jumping around it. our dock, but Let's okay. jump straight in. So, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to ask questions. Uh, imagine uh, none of us have the, tactics that you guys have at legion why mm -hmm. would you want a center a high ftp rider like on the front doing a lot of watts way before the sprint even starts or with let's say 10 laps to go like what does legion yeah. do at 10 laps to go uh at 10 laps to go we should have already we should have already gathered at the front as a team it takes a while like i feel like sometimes people think it's like just comes together like no like people are all over the place and to ride as a team you can't start riding you can't start setting tempo uh until you guys are together right so we start gathering at the front with maybe 15 laps to go um and then by the time 10 laps ro rolls around everybody should have been there have like relaxed for a second uh, and then when we hit the front, we go to control. So 10 laps to go, so go, you go to control. And that's when it's amazing to have those higher FTP riders because they'll take like, Corey Locker will take like lap pulls. And when he's taking those lap pulls, it not only allows for everybody behind him, the whole team to get into the mindset of, okay, like that those final seconds of breathing, like they know what's coming. Like we're about to start rotating through. We got to control the road. We got to know where you basically, you most of our guys spend the whole race understanding where the speed is coming from in the corners. And once they understand that, when we start riding the front at 10 laps to go, we're not, we're not riding so fast uh, that we're hurting ourselves, right? We're riding fast enough where people in the back don't really want to attack and controlling the corners, right? So, if we go around a left-hand corner and it's maybe like 300 meters out of like turn two, we're going into turn three. 
Um, and every lap that we've been riding the race, like the momentum comes on the outside at like 25 meters before the corner. Like it's our team's job to make sure that we take up space in the road. So you'll see like, we'll ride the inside, we'll protect the inside and then right before the corner, the train will start to move to the right, but it, it, it staggers, right? It's not like the whole train moves into a single line to the right to the right side of the course. No, like everyone will stagger and we call it taking up space, taking mm -hmm. up road. And then what that does is like, you're, the thought is if our team is filling up all of those spaces where you would want to put your bike uh, coming from behind and trying to use that momentum and there's nowhere to go, then you have to stay behind. And then as we come out of the corner, we just like, they just like basically like uh, file back into a line. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so okay. you guys do that really well. Uh, and it prevents people from coming on the inside of you too, right? Right, because you don't, we don't swing from the inside of the course to the outside of the course until it's like an uncomfortable spot that if you were to dive the inside, you would, you would basically hit the corner on the inside of the corner, which yeah. no, one wants, to do. Do. <laughs> no yeah. one wants to do. <laughs> how much, how much work is that to train that into riders, Justin? Like the, so, and what I'm getting at is the ability to recognize where momentum comes from on the course, the proper race line, then how to take it up. Is that something that you have to teach people or you're selecting athletes that already have found it? And if so, how do they develop it? uh it's hard to teach it's hard to teach because you're not you're no longer riding as an individual you have to think about what the, the five guys behind you are doing and where they're going to end up right so it's really hard to teach we're just lucky enough like hunter grove has been we've been corey's been racing with hunter grove since they were like i think like 14 or something right mm -hmm. or 13. so like they just got they just have it you know um diego's younger but he's he's been a fast learner um Scott, me and Scott raced on sidelines together. Like, you know, we raced in 2016, 17. Yeah, 2016, 17. So we have experience together. Um, and even the year before that, he raced on some Australian team. And that was the year that we were going back and forth and, and beating each other. Um, mm -hmm. But they they understood it. You know what I mean? He, he already understood what the system looked like and felt like. So it's a lot of guys that have experience. We, we teach guys. Um, but I think that's about culture. The culture within the team is what's important. Guys, if guys understand what's going on uh, and you have, you know, four out of five guys are doing it right, or sorry, four out of six guys are doing it right, uh, that's the best environment to learn in, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it comes pretty fast. So let's say it's 10 laps to go to five laps to go, and you guys are going hard. You're not hurting your, each other, the team, but somebody mm -hmm. does do attacks. Like I've seen this in your video. Someone does do a flyer. Uh, well, how do you guys respond? What do you do? Do you try to like cover it right away or what? No, uh, like typically <laughs> that another big FTP guy, uh, Tyler or, or uh, Corey Lockwood or someone who one of the, or Hunter, right? They'll wrote, they'll basically, it's, you don't change what you're doing. We'll continue to control the road. Um, and once one of those guys touch the front, they'll lift the pace a little bit. They won't lift it to where we're, we're hurting because what happens is when guys are riding at that FTP for like five laps or six laps or whatever, when we're getting down to like those lower laps, the worst thing you can do is change the speed of, uh, of what the group is doing, right? D too drastically. So Corey Lockwood is capable of riding harder than most of the guys. So if you were to just like go and chase like frantically uh, when we got attacked, uh, he could blow the team up. He could blow me up for sure. And I'm What's sitting at, I'm sitting at the back. What sort of wattage is he just to give like some numbers for an example, uh, he can just ride at like 450, right? He can, he can just ride at 450. Tyler, Ty, him and Tyler, <laughs> man, Tyler, Tyler just did 450 in, in the, in the Joe Martin time trial. It's like, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> that's insane. So like, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's why if he lifts it just a bit, it's going to be really hard to get away from you guys because try right. riding, you know, even at a break effort, then try sustaining above 450 after a break effort mm -hmm. to get away from an already fast moving team. Like that's yeah, going to be extremely already, tough. Right. We're riding the course like really fast. We're taking up good, good parts of the road. And another thing it does when we're taking up parts of the road that we're like kind of controlling the race, it only typically allows for like two or three people to attack. And then you're now you're coming from like 10 back because it's like our six guys, 
there's the other like four sprinters that are fighting to be behind our train. So like, if you're going to attack our team, you have to come from like 10 back. Right. So that's already, it's not only is it like, having to attack and then sustain an effort it's like you got to attack pat before you even get a gap you know it's maybe like you got to put two seconds into us or three seconds into us before you even get past the front of the train then you're looking at like one or two riders up against a whole team which that, <laughs> yeah that's tough <laughs> like i don't care how yeah. strong you are that is a tough ask <laughs> if you like this video make sure you give us a thumbs up if you didn't like this video you can give it a thumbs down but let us know what you would have done differently in the comments below if you want to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, check out trainerroad.com. Do it. If you think I have better hair than Jonathan, give it a thumbs up. If not, leave a comment. My hair is better than his.